All right, uh, afternoon once again. I hope you're all well. Uh, welcome to another session of computer architecture. And um, in today's session, we're going to be looking at PSUs or power supply units. Um, I think in, the, in our previous session, we concluded on uh, motherboards. Um, you'll discover that we'll still need to discuss your mass storage technologies or hard drive technologies and also look at how to implement them as far as functionality within uh, the computing system there is concerned. So what we're going to be doing as far as today's session is, is uh, goes, is going to be looking at um, that particular unit that powers up our machine or that uh, is responsible for supplying electrical energy so that uh, the machine can function without uh, any uh, distinctive issues there. So that's your uh, distinctive PSU. I think what this will also do as far as your assessment uh, platforms there is concerned is also conclude material uh, or content that is relevant as far as your first test uh, would go. I think um, we might have discussed this before. If you're looking at um, the ninth edition of your prescribed textbook, uh, the chapters that you need to focus on when it comes to that assessment is chapters two to eight. And then uh, if you're looking at uh, the 10th edition of your prescribed textbook, then uh, the relevant chapters there, as far as your particular assessment would go, would be chapters one to seven. As far as the assignment is concerned, it's already been uploaded. On your, uh, on your portals. I think there's uh, some documentation that is there as well in terms of additional reading, as well as uh, um, your, your, your uh, module guide. Uh, I've already um, undertaken a session on uh, discussion of the assignment. You can go and have a quick look at that particular uh, discussion on the YouTube channel there, it just discusses what needs to be done as far as that particular assignment is concerned. I think we've discussed this before as well in terms of um, the al allocations associated with marks when it comes to your, your assessments, the 25% associated with the assignment, the 30% associated with your uh, test, 35 uh, associated with the exam, and then lastly, the 10% that uh, is the integrated curriculum engagement or ISTOS that are obviously relevant in terms of you understanding uh, um, module content a little bit more lucidly as far as um, uh, computer architecture there is concerned. So I have a quick look there. Um, it's the same assignment that uh, uh, the phase out is also going to be undertaken. So it's one and the same discussion as far as uh, uh, that there is concerned. Should you go through that content or should you go through that clip and not understand uh, uh, certain sections, uh, please give me a shout and then we can always engage ourselves on um, the relevant platforms accordingly. All right, so um, PSU, power supply unit. Uh, main purpose is just to obviously provide power associated uh, with our uh, uh, computing components, especially when you're looking at it from a desktop point of view. Uh, as far as your uh, configurations would go, you'll discover that uh, we uh, talked about your motherboards in terms of uh, chipset and form factors. And one of the form factors that we discussed was ATX. Uh, if you remember, that is short for Advanced Technology Extended. And uh, you'll discover that most of the cases that are out there, obviously, are in line uh, um, uh, with that particular ATX standard. So naturally, you also have a power supply unit that is relevant or that is also in line with that uh, distinctive form factor in terms of uh, the actual uh, uh, shape and size, not just of the board itself, but of the tower or the actual computer box or the system unit that you'd use as far as your uh, uh, particular mechanisms are concerned. You will discover that this particular unit as well, because of its uh, arguably intricate nature in, in the sense that, remember, you're looking at it from an IT uh, point of view as opposed to an electrical platform. Uh, so there, there, there are very few things that you can really troubleshoot when it comes to an actual uh, uh, PSU. You'll discover that what you're actually concentrating on more in certain instances is uh, uh, cleaning of the fans, uh, as opposed to anything else, should that particular unit malfunction or give you distinctive issues, the best thing to do is, uh, uh, as opposed to uh, trying to troubleshoot and understand exactly what's happening there, uh, replacing the unit would be your best bet. So you've got uh, fans, obviously, that are associated with this particular component. We'll have images uh, um, during the course of the session to enable you to understand exactly what's happening there. If that fan obviously gathers dust, you'll discover that probably the PSU 
uh, in its functionality might make a lot of noise. Uh, so cleaning it, uh, uh, cleaning that fan can alleviate that issue. In some instances, you can also even uh, find it not functioning appropriately because of uh, 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 that particular uh, dust and obviously inappropriate cooling that is there. Because remember, it's an, ele an electrical component. So it's bound to generate heat. And if it's not cooled accordingly, um, that can uh, cause a bit of detriment as far as basic functionality there um, is concerned. So it's, it's, it's applicable for you to replace. I think we've discussed these before, uh, especially when we're looking at uh, a safety and professionalism or operational uh, procedures where you get such components like your keyboards, for instance. I think uh, um, with keyboards, your, your, your generic uh, um, uh, troubleshooting mechanisms there is probably cleaning that board uh, uh, or cleaning that uh, particular unit rather. Uh, as opposed to you really opening it up and, and trying to uh, um, get to the nitty gritties of what is happening as far as the electronics within that particular component uh, uh, is concerned. So the best thing that you want to do should you encounter a keyboard that uh, is malfunctioning is uh, literally repla replace it, whether it's wireless or uh, 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 wired, uh, your, your generic USB keyboards, your best bet, uh, instead of wasting time, is to uh, replace that uh, component. Same difference would go with such uh, uh, components as your mice as well. You don't want to spend uh, too much time uh, uh, trying to, 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 to get to the nitty gritties of why a specific mouse is not functioning. Probably the best thing you would want to do in that environment is just replace it. Same difference would go with other units like your uh, RAM as well. And what you'd want to do is just uh, literally, uh, if you've got a bad RAM that is uh, uh, giving you issues, instead of troubleshooting it um, or trying to uh, get down to the nitty gritties, again, your best bet would be to replace the component. So these uh, units or these components where you are, you typically move around with them and uh, you're looking at swapping them out should you encounter uh, uh, problems are called FRUs or field replaceable units. So if you look at, uh, let me see if I can quickly share uh, our PowerPoint here, yeah. make us our notes as we progress. Uh, give me a couple of seconds here. Yeah. All right, so if you look at, at, at uh, um, what I was just mentioning earlier on, as far as these particular uh, components are concerned, you have got what they call, uh, um, let's see if we can uh, populate this accordingly. You get what they call F, are use right, and this is short for uh, field uh, replaceable units. All right, so FRUs or FRU uh, in singular format, that's a field replaceable unit. So what you're looking at is components that you, as a PC uh, tech there, these are components that you may, might want to move around with. Should you encounter certain uh, uh, environments where you obviously need to, to, to look at troubleshooting a PSU, troubleshooting RAM, uh, sometimes even uh, uh, your hard drives as well, also uh, uh, inclusive of, 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 of your RAM and such uh, basic input components like your mice and your keyboard. Uh, all you'd want to do in those scenarios is just uh, replace them, save time uh, 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 and money at the end of the day, uh, as far as the, your actual client today is concerned. So it's just a question of, of, of replacing these. So. Uh, these are called field replaceable units because of their in 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 in, in instances where you're comparing um, your input devices, they're very basic components, right? And instances you you compare you're comparing it uh, to your power supply unit, an intricate component rather that you'd rather just um, replace as opposed to try and troubleshoot. Because remember, we're not really in the makings of understanding exactly what's happening within the whole concept of. Uh, um, the, the, the intricacies of, 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 of your PSUs. But it's important now to understand how they function and also look at uh, 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 the different uh, um, variables associated with the power and how much power you need dependent on uh, the type of computing system that uh, you're typically looking at. I think we can all agree that if you're looking at a basic machine, entry-level desktop, just for argument's sake, uh, that particular desktop is just being used 
uh, for researching content on the net, uh, typing out uh, uh, a few Word documents here and there, and obviously uh, uh, maybe checking emails. That's a basic entry level uh, type of uh, computing mechanism that might not need uh, as much power as compared to some uh, a workstation that is used for multimedia purposes, graphic design, or gaming, for argument's sake. So it's important to understand what type of uh, uh, PSU you would need, what uh, goes into calculation of, of, of the actual uh, 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 variables that are there, and obviously what else to consider in terms of connectivity, uh, uh, the list will go on and on. So as far as this particular session there is concerned, our main focus is just to look at the basics in terms of what's happening with electricity, you will discover that some of the content you uh, might already uh, be clued on. Then looking at uh, the different details of, of naturally powering up a PC, uh, looking at that maintenance and basic installation of PSUs, and then obviously be able to troubleshoot them accordingly and uh, look at, at, at fire safety as well, because these are electrical components uh, uh, and should uh, fires break out because of, of incorrect installation or because of malfunction, uh, and naturally, you should be able to understand exactly what you need to do in those distinctive environments. So if you're looking at it from a, a, um, an electronic point of view, literally, when it comes to, to, to understanding what's happening with uh, electricity, what you're distinctively discussing there is just understanding your voltage, which uh, literally looks at uh, uh, literally measuring the pressure of uh, electrons in any given environment there. You also might want to also discuss uh, what's happening with current or amperage, which uh, 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 literally lo looks at, at uh, what is happening as far as the amount of, of, of electrons moving at uh, 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 between a certain point uh, as far as your, your particular wire or, or, or connection there is concerned. And then obviously the overall uh, platform there of understanding the power that you need, which is your wattage. So normally the, the equation that you want to focus on is uh, V multiplied by A, which is uh, uh, equivalent to W there. So your V is your voltage, your A is your amperage, and uh, uh, your W there is your wattage. So ultimately the actual power that uh, you're looking at in terms of, of, of uh, what your PSU can, can give out or what your computer system needs is literally uh, measured in, in your wattage there. So this is what you need to uh, take into consideration. Basic uh, PSUs for those entry-level machines, 450 to about uh, 500 uh, watts dependent. And uh, um, when you're looking at your high-end uh, machining mechanisms, um, from about 550 onwards, I think even all the way up until 1,500 watts, dependent on the type of machine that you've got, even especially if you're looking at it from server-side computing as well. So it's important just to, to, to understand uh, uh, the kind of relationship that is there to uh, um, obviously, and uh, again, like I was saying before, understand what type of PSU we would need uh, dependent on the machine that uh, you're typically using as far as your uh, particular environment there is concerned. So just once again there, your V is your voltage, uh, uh, literally just looking at uh, what is happening as far as the pressure of electrons within any given wire there. And then uh, your um, the amount. So if you want to look at it from a different perspective, think of it as a as bandwidth. If you want to look at it from 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 a different point of view, when you're discussing the whole concept of current, because you're looking at uh, the amount of electrons that are literally passing through a certain point uh, within a distinctive wire measured in amperes. So your current there is uh, measured in amps. That's what uh, the A there is representing. And then your W is obviously the wattage. You might also even want to discuss the resistance, which is measured in ohms, uh, um, as far as your uh, electrical platform there is concerned. But ultimately, a formula that you, you, you literally might uh, want to concentrate on and understand exactly there is your V multiplied by A, which gives you your W. So when it comes to electricity, it flows in two different flavors or in, 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 in two formats, if you want to look at it from a different point of view. Um, these two formats, are uh, DC and um, and AC, right? The distinctive difference there between the two is that uh, uh, DC is uh, um, direct current. And then AC is uh, alternating current.
All right, the distinctive difference uh, between these two, your most electrical components, if not all of them, would uh, distinctively use uh, DC. All right, so all your 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 basic electrical components or devices, uh, 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 most of them, if you want to be uh, um, uh, pedantic about it, uh, would literally use direct uh, uh, current. All right, so you powering up of of any given electrical component would need uh, a DC or direct current. But you'll discover that um, your power companies or your power utilities um, would uh, um, uh, literally supply AC power. So what li literally comes through to your sockets there is, is alternated current. And the reason this is done is because your AC uh, literally uh, um, it's, it's better when you're looking at, tra 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 at traversing longer distances. So literally from your power company to your to your to your to your to your houses, just for argument's sake, um, these distances are applicable when it comes to to, to alternating current. It, tra it travels a lot more efficiently uh, as far as as long distances they are concerned, and then naturally your devices would then uh, literally use uh, direct current. So there has to be some kind of conversion that takes place as far as your uh, uh, um, PSU components they are concerned, just to ensure that uh, you've got uh, 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 configurations in incorporated there accordingly. So I think it's important to understand those two different uh, uh, formats and flavors to understand exactly what's uh, uh, happening in that particular uh, uh, framework. And then when it comes to supplying of this uh, uh, particular AC, um, you will discover that there are two um, values that are normally incorporated there. Uh, normally, you'll find uh, uh, these two values for your for your uh, uh, AC there represented uh, something along these lines with 115 uh, VAC, which is short for, um, let me write that properly. Uh, so, um, VAC would be short for volts of alternating current. So uh, that sign that you see just in front of your uh, double one five there is, is uh, literally representing an approximation. So normally you find that this is actually ranging from about 110 um, to 120 uh, there roughly, as far as your basic uh, setup there is concerned. So this is what the states use. So in the USA, they use uh, this particular uh, uh, numeric value, as far as your votes of uh, um, alternating current is concerned, that is what is supplied to the uh, sockets as far as uh, power is concerned. The rest of the world, so this is within um, USA, and then the rest of the world would use um, about 230 volts of um, alternating current. And again, naturally your actual range there is between uh, about 220 to 200 and uh, 240. So that's, uh, um, let's call this wrist. That's the rest of the world. So that's the actual power that is supplied uh, uh, um, as far as your setups they are concerned. So that's uh, um, what you'd gauge as far as these particular PSUs uh, would go. So your PSUs would come in those uh, uh, distinctive uh, uh, formats there. Um, and then naturally you will discover that there was a time where uh, most of these PSUs would come with a switch at, 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 at the back that would enable you to uh, change from um, 115 to uh, 230 there. And uh, again, it was very important for you to be very careful with this particular switch, because if you are going to change uh, a 115 to a 240 in a 115 environment, uh, that uh, uh, literally doesn't really uh, do anything. I think the, the, the worst thing would be that probably your machine would, would, would not boot because you, you don't have enough power that is being supplied. But then if you look at, at, at converting um, that particular uh, switch to, to, to 115 and you plug it into a 230 socket, you can blow your machine because there's too much power, obviously, that's uh, literally being supplied. So it's important to understand uh, the, 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 the delicate nature 
of what is happening as far as these particular switches there is concerned. In certain instances, some of these power supply units would come with, with automated uh, functionality or technology that would enable to gauge what type of power is obviously coming from um, your, your, your uh, distinctive environment. So obviously, normally at the back of, of fixed uh, input power supply platforms, you'd have typical switches that will enable uh, uh, that uh, uh, particular conversion there. But again, uh, uh, like I said before, uh, it's very important for you to understand that if you do work with a power supply or PSU that has this manual switch, you ensure that uh, that particular switch is, is, is uh, um, uh, in the right distinctive position just to avoid any detriment that can uh, take place uh, as far as this, these particular environments or, or, or units uh, uh, there is, 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 is concerned. So if you wanna look at a basic example of this, I think you also want to even take into consideration your multimeter uh, devices that are typically uh, used uh, to, to look at uh, offering uh, electrical tests, uh, looking at things like continuity, uh, resistance, uh, AC voltage, which is your, your VAC, uh, and DC voltage, which is VDC. Because remember, um, VAC, like we said before, stands for volts of uh, um, alternating current. VDC would obviously stand for volts of direct current dependent on environment. So you obviously would want to have uh, uh, this particular tool in your uh, uh, in your arsenal that enables you to typically just 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 test what is happening with with your electrical environments there, just to understand exactly what's uh, what's going on. So if you look, want to look at some uh, basic. Uh, uh, diagrammatic representations of what uh, uh, we've just looked at. Uh, let's see if we can quickly um, share a different screen here. Yeah? So what we were mentioning earlier on, typical example of what um, your uh, PSU would uh, literally uh, look like. Again, uh, like we said before, the, 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 the shapes and sizes would normally de be dependent on the actual form factor of the actual case uh, is concerned. But uh, by default, you'll normally find that most, if not all, of uh, the more common uh, type of, 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 of um, system units or towers that are there would use an ATX type of uh, power supply unit. So that's a typical example of an ATX uh, a PSU that you'd find as far as your specific environments that would go, because like we said before, ATX, your most common standard when it comes to shape and size of basic boards, which would obviously also determine the actual shape and size rather of your distinctive cases. And then um, what we were mentioning uh, a couple of seconds ago, that when you look at DC, DC is just constant power within one distinctive uh, direction there, best for your electronics, because that's what you're actually uh, uh, looking at as far as your electrical components, they are concerned. That is what is supplied. That's what your uh, electrical components would typically uh, use. So movement in one uh, distinctive direction there, as far as your uh, uh, environments would go. And then on the other hand, your AC, which is the one that uh, is, is used by your uh, uh, electrical power companies there, uh, is the one that uh, um, obviously looks at alternating power back and forth as illustrated in that diagram that we've got on screen. And uh, like we mentioned uh, a lot earlier on, it's best for uh, traversing long distances as far as your specific environments uh, um, uh, they are concerned. And then if you were to look at, at, at um, what we've just mentioned, this is the switch I was talking about earlier on. So you've got a, a, a couple of switches that are there as far as or, or, or connections uh, that are there as well, as far as that particular example there is concerned. So you've got the switches, uh, power on and power off, uh, which is the one on top there. And then in the middle, what is uh, literally illustrated by that uh, uh, circular indication there, that's the 115 or 230 uh, uh, um, switch that you can use. And then just below that, you've got a power connection that uh, is normally known as the IEC 320 connector. So the power connection there where you plug in your cable or your power cable is known as the IEC uh, a 320 connector, a standard associated with uh, a specific type of connection when it comes to your uh, 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 power that is there. And like we mentioned before, very important for you to make sure that you don't play around with this particular switch uh, um, it, uh, to just to avoid uh, um, 
uh, any detriment that can take place as far as uh, um, your computing mechanisms are concerned. So like we mentioned uh, um, a couple of, of, of moments ago, should you plug a 230 into a, a 215? Um, the, like I said before, the worst scenario is probably your machine won't boot because there's not enough power that is being supplied to that unit. But on the other hand, should you plug a 115 into a 230 environment there or, or socket, uh, then it means that there's too much power that is being supplied, then naturally that particular unit obviously would be damaged because there's too much electrical power coming through uh, um, as far as your uh, connections they are concerned. And then obviously as far as some of the units or the gadgets that you'll obviously need to use just to check uh, um, whether these particular units are running accordingly. Because remember when you look at your basic outlet voltages, when you look at any particular socket, you've got your neutral, you've got your ground, uh, and, and naturally you need to understand uh, um, what is happening as far as, as, as your connections there. So your neutral, your, your ground and your hot, you want to ensure that you understand exactly is there enough power that is coming from the actual socket itself or is, is there enough power coming from the actual uh, unit? Is it functioning appropriately? If not, then again, like we mentioned before, your best bet would be to replace. And if you've got issues with your sockets, then that's a different story as far as uh, uh, measurements there are concerned. So what you've got on screen now, that's a typical example of a digital uh, multimeter. All right, so again, it's responsible for measuring a, a number of aspects associated with electrical current as far as your setup there is concerned. So these, these multimeters obviously cons uh, uh, consist of two distinctive probes, an analog or digital uh, a, a meter there, and uh, obviously a dial that uh, is incorporated uh, to set the type of test that you literally um, want to perform. And like we mentioned before, uh, uh, those four distinctive types of electrical tests that you're looking at as far as your multimeters would go would include your continuity, your resistance, uh, your, amp your AC voltage, uh, DC voltage as well. So continuity, all you're literally looking at in, 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 in that distinctive environment is uh, um, looking at, 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 uh, at, at whether any of your electrons can flow from one particular end of the wire to, to the next. So you're looking at continuity within your cable, or you're looking at continuity within the actual wire that you're using. So continuity's main purpose is just to test whether ele electrons can flow from one particular end uh, 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 to the next there, as far as your specific uh, setup there is concerned. And then obviously when you're testing AC and DC voltages is just to ensure uh, uh, um, uh, uh, that, that uh, obviously the measure of the voltage is what it should be. So just for making sure that the actual measure uh, or the amount of, of, of AC or DC voltages there is what uh, it should be. So if there's no continuity, obviously it means that uh, the cable is probably, there's problems with that actual cable or wire naturally needs to be replaced. So it's very important uh, for you to, to, to take um, distinctive cognizance of. You can also use other gadgets uh, that, uh, that are specialized uh, to literally test AC voltage and uh, typical examples of these would be uh, uh, circuit testers, all right? So uh, as far as these are concerned, it's, it's just, uh, uh, again, a specialized component that uh, is used to, to generically test your, 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 your circuit and uh, um, literally normally provides three LEDs that uh, describe uh, um, everything that literally can go wrong with, a, with any distinctive uh, plug as far as your um, environments that are concerned. So a typical example of what a circuit tester would look like would be um, what you uh, see on, on screen currently. Like I was saying earlier on, you've got your LEDs there or light emitting diodes that are literally responsible for just checking what is happening as far as um, your particular plug uh, there or outlet, um, AC outlet there um, is concerned. So the other thing also that you need to, 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 to take into cognizance is that uh, um, you've got, um, you'll need to protect equipment uh, from, from, from these electrical uh, anomalies that can take place. So when you're looking at uh, this protection, I think if you can go back to our, um, let's see if you can quickly go back to our uh, PowerPoint slides there. So 
So if you look at, at what is happening as far as uh, 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 neutral uh, protection, you've got um, um, certain aspects that you need to consider. So normally you'll find that uh, um, some of the problems that uh, 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 can take place, so no matter how clean your AC supply appears to be or, or, or how the actual multimeter measures it in, in, in certain instances, um, voltage from, from, from power companies would literally tend to either, either drop, uh, uh, go uh, um, a lot higher than, than, than distinctively normal, or in some instances, uh, uh, look at uh, complete loss of power in certain instances. So it's important to understand. So the actual anomalies that you can uh, discuss there would be uh, one, what is called a SAG. And this is a temporal decrease in power. So again, in this particular uh, uh, sense, the worst that could happen is that your machine shuts down because there's no power, there's not enough power that is being supplied from your socket. So this is just a temporal uh, a decrease in, 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 in power. So it drops below a specific level uh, or below uh, the level that is necessary for you to successfully power your uh, uh, particular uh, machine there. And then on the other hand, you've got uh, another one that is called a, uh, a, a spike. And obviously this is a temporal increase. So a spike can also be known as a, uh, a surge, right? So this is a temporal increase now in, in power. So this is too much power uh, being supplied. And again, uh, in, the, in these particular instances, what that typically would then mean is that uh, your, your, your components obviously become damaged because you've got too much power that is being supplied to your uh, distinctive uh, units there. And then you can uh, uh, distinctively also uh, uh, discuss the complete loss of power, which is uh, normally associated with the term um, your blackout. So your, your, your multiple SAGs uh, uh, can also be known as uh, uh, what they call brownouts. Uh, uh, and then obviously uh, a blackout would be that uh, a, a complete loss of power. So what you want to then obviously take into consideration is that we want to incorporate uh, devices or components that then safeguard against these anomalies, uh, um, trying to safeguard against uh, uh, these surges. Uh, surges would detrimentally affect uh, our machines. Remember when we were discussing uh, operational procedures as well as safety and professionalism, we talked about uh, ESD as one of the detrimental issues associated with uh, 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 with uh, with 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 uh, uh, functionality of your computing mechanisms in, in essence, so that can detrimentally damage such components like your RAM, your CPUs, and uh, 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 your motherboards. For for argument's sake, what you want to obviously do is that you need to have mechanisms, architectures, or components put in place that can literally safeguard against uh, 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 these particular issues. So what you would obviously would need to then take into consideration. Uh, is such components like your surge suppressors. You can discuss um, your uh, 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 UPSs or uninterruptible power supply uh, uh, units there. So to alleviate, um, you can discuss uh, 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 such components um, as your surge suppressors. So you've got um, a surge suppressor. And, and its main purpose is obviously to uh, ensure that it absorbs that extra voltage from the surge to protect your, your, your PC. Its main purpose is to ensure that it absorbs uh, that uh, extra um, uh, uh, voltage uh, from the actual surge to protect the actual uh, 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 PC itself. You would find that in certain instances, your PSU, your power supply, that, that's actually um, a commendable job in terms of, of surge suppression and can handle smaller surges, all right? But the moment uh, these surges uh, go beyond a specific uh, um, uh, a level there, obviously your, 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 your surge suppressors become your default go-tos because the moment your, 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 your PSU is exposed to multiple um, of these uh, uh, small uh, surges, it obviously would, it would, would eventually fail. So to try and alleviate that, 
um, the incorporation of a surge suppressor would be uh, uh, something that you might want to take into consideration. Different types of surge suppressors that are obviously also uh, incorporated there. The other component that you also might want to uh, uh, discuss in terms of trying to alleviate against uh, uh, these uh, 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 anomalies, especially when you're looking at, 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 at um, the SAGs we were talking about, uh, or the actual uh, uh, blackouts, so the complete loss of power, you might want to discuss uh, um, your UPSs. And you remember, UPS stands for uninterruptible. Uh, um, power supply. Right, so that's what your UPS uh, uh, does there to try and protect against the, the, the SAGs, that temporal decrease or the brownouts uh, in power or the complete loss of power, which is uh, naturally your, your blackout. So normally you find that as far as these particular UPSs are concerned, uh, you've got uh, uh, two main types that you might want to uh, uh, concentrate on. As far as these UPSs would go, you've got uh, what they call an online UPS. And uh, uh, you also find uh, uh, um, standby and line interactive. So literally, uh, so you've got standby, uh, standby, and then you can also even discuss uh, line uh, interactive. So in essence, the two main you'd want to talk about there is online and standby, but some uh, uh, literatures and schools of thought would literally want to uh, mention that uh, your, your, your standby in certain instances can still work within the same concept as, as line interactive. But the actual differences that you'd find there is that your um, online, with your online UPS, uh, as the name uh, they or the term would suggest, devices are constantly powered through the actual UPS itself. Uh, or through the actual UPS uh, battery. So normally uh, your UPSs uh, would come with, with, the, with batteries within them that would then act as your electricity uh, or your electrical uh, power supply substitute uh, when it comes to, 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 to uh, um, uh, connection there. And uh, um, your online and your standard, uh, oh, sorry, and your standby rather, UPSs will obviously have these, but in essence, your line interactive on the other hand, instead of using a battery, it uses special circuitry that uh, um, obviously it looks at 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 uh, at managing the actual uh, power that is there. The moment it dips be below a specific uh, uh, value or point, automatically it starts kicking in. So it it's, 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 it enables um, handling of moderate um, uh, alternating current uh, sags and surges that obviously. Uh, don't literally need a uh, complete switch over to, 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 to battery power. So again, your, your, your online is, is, is uh, associated with an environment where uh, devices are constantly powered through this particular uh, UPS's battery. And then obviously with standby, uh, um, your, your, you find that uh, your uh, device is connected to the actual um, UPS would receive battery power only when AC... Uh, um, um, sags below uh, a specific value. Normally that value is between approximately, approximately between 80 and uh, 90 uh, VAC or volts. So anytime that it goes below that, uh, uh, um, that point, then your standby UPS automatically kicks in. So it's, all, it's only there when, or it only starts kicking in when a specific value uh, has been gotten to in terms of, of, of these SAGs. And again, that particular um, uh, value, uh, like we mentioned before, approximately between um, 80 uh, to about uh, 90 uh, volts there. That's when you're discussing your, your, your standby. And like I said before, your line interactive on the other hand now would obviously use special circuitry that uh, replaces the actual battery itself. So it's only it's only there to literally handle uh, minor uh, uh, sags and power surges dependent on your specific environments as far as your setup there is concerned. So these are the, the two ways that you can literally deal with uh, um, your, your, your sags, your, your, your spikes or your surges uh, and your distinctive blackouts as far as your setups they are concerned. Normally you'll find that from a physical point of view, 
the smaller the UPS, the less time it gives you in terms of, of, of uh, alternate power. The bigger the UPS, the more time it gives you in terms of alternate power. So normally you find the smaller ones were literally there to enable you to shut down your computer system without any problem. Because normally you want to avoid the scenario where if power goes off, you're working on something uh, and then automatically everything is literally lost there. You want to ensure that you've got enough time to properly shut down your computer system, probably uh, save whatever it is that you're working on uh, uh, accordingly, and then run the proper shutdown process to avoid any uh, any issues as far as uh, functionality of that machine or loss of content there is concerned. And then uh, um, the bigger they are, they'll give you a couple more 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 time. So normally you find the smaller ones about thirty odd minutes uh, 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 to 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 some probably even 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 less. And then the bigger ones give you uh, four hours and so on as, as typical examples to continue working on content or on whatever it is that you want to uh, work on uh, uh, until power is, is distinctively uh, restored. So normally what uh, determines these uh, timeframes is, is, is how big these particular UPSs are, because like we said before, remember you've got batteries within them. So arguably the bigger the battery, the more time you've got as alternate electrical power, uh, the smaller the battery, uh, um, uh, the opposite obviously applies. So what you want to do is if you want to look at it from a diagrammatic representation, again, let's see if we can quickly have a look at uh, what's happening there. So I think what we were previously looking at is your uh, a circuit test there. And uh, when you want to look at, at what is happening as far as your surge suppressor, that's a typical example of what a surge suppressor would uh, distinctively look like. So just trying to, to, to uh, minimize the impact of um, the detriment obviously associated with, with, with these spikes or uh, surges. And then on the other hand, you've got um, a surge suppressors that can obviously uh, uh, enable that, that work hand in hand with your, your cabling when it comes to your networks and, and, and your, your um, telephone lines as well. So you've got different surge protectors or surge suppressors rather that uh, um, would, 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 would. So I think it, it's also important to understand the terms there because I think uh, in certain instances you find that the term surge uh, protector being used um, rather uh, uh, loosely. But I think it's important to understand that, you, that the best you can really do is to suppress some of these surges because the ultimate protection is... Uh, uh, complete disconnection from your power socket. Uh, that's the ultimate power that, I mean, the protection that you can get from surge suppression really, or from surge, uh, from surges rather. So I think uh, it's important to identify the, the terms that are relevant in these environments that you're looking at suppressing uh, as opposed to, 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 to ultimate uh, protection there. But look, it's an argument we can have for days on that one. And then if you look at it from a different point of view, this is a typical example of a surge suppressor now that uh, uh, looks at telephone line protection as well. So cable and telephone line protection is, is typically incorporated in this particular type of uh, a surge, uh, a suppressor, suppressor rather. So it obviously always has, has um, more functionality to a certain extent and arguably as far as the economic aspect of it or impact is concerned, uh, becomes slightly more uh, expensive dependent on uh, um, and on environments. So it's important to take cognizance uh, uh, from that uh, uh, distinctive point of view. And then um, you also can, can, can work, these particular UPSs, remember, you, they don't literally work as loan entities. You can have apps that you can uh, have installed that enable you to manage uh, how they function and also monitor what's happening in terms of, of, of uh, the amount of power that is left uh, as far as the actual battery there is concerned, how much time you've got left over uh, uh, when you're working on that UPS. So you can use certain apps uh, uh, incorporated there. So this is a typical example of what a, a, a basic uh, UPS would uh, literally look like. Uh, several companies that are out there that are responsible for your manufacture, configuration and deployment of these. Uh, APC is one very common brand, as well as Cyber Power. Uh, these are two of well, the most common, or APC, one of the, the main ones, really, uh, as far as, as uh, um, I think APC, if I'm not mistaken, uh, it, uh, it should stand for American Power Company, if I'm not mistaken, but 
feel free to correct me on that one. And then you can also um, discuss cyber power, like I was saying. There, there, there are a whole host of them that are out there, really. And uh, I think what is important, just to understand, they all provide one and the same thing, just to, to try and safeguard against uh, uh, the SAGs and the uh, um, ultimate blackouts. Also uh, act as uh, platforms that protect against uh, uh, power surges as well. And then uh, when you look at... Um, what you've got in terms of uh, the apps I was discussing earlier on, something that can enable you to look at uh, management of what is happening as far as your distinctive um, uh, UPS environments uh, is concerned. So looking at how much running time is, 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 is remaining uh, in this particular example, we've got about 29 minutes and seven seconds. Uh, it looks at the temperature in this particular instance, as far as examples would go, 28.7 uh, uh, degrees Celsius, the input, uh, output, battery status, uh, and so on. So these are just ways and means that you can use to, to, to try and, 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 uh, and monitor what's happening with your, with your, with your PSUs. I think it's, it's, it's quite, these are quite nifty tools that uh, make it a lot easier for you to probably manage and to understand how much time you've got left and so on, how much battery power and how, how long it will still take for it to charge should it be connected directly with an online UPS for argument's sake. So uh, uh, that's a typical example of what is happening in that, in that uh, uh, distinctive environment. And then when you look at uh, uh, basic, uh, when you're looking at it from, uh, at a PSU now a little bit uh, closer, uh, this is what your, your generic uh, PSU looks like. Again, um, within the ATX conventions, you've got a couple of wires that are coming out there as well as connectors. So it's also important uh, from a PC tech uh, uh, point of view just to know specifically what uh, each one of these connectors are, how much power is associated there and where it typically connects to. Because normally when you look at power requirements uh, within your computing mechanism, you normally are discussing 3.3 uh, uh, volts and 5 volts for onboard electronics. So obviously anything to do with, with your integrated circuits and so on, you're looking at, at, at anything between 3.3 volts to uh, 5 uh, volts there. And then when you discuss uh, um, uh, comp uh, components that need more power, uh, uh, literally, or that are more uh, uh, power intensive, you can discuss your traditional hard drives and uh, uh, optical drives uh, uh, in certain instances and typical examples of uh, uh, obviously the power associated with that or the, the requirements would be about 12 volts. So that's uh, what you normally are looking at in terms of what your PSU uh, would typically uh, supply. So if you go back maybe before we um, continue with the different types of connectors that are uh, there, if we look at, at uh, maybe going back to what we initially had in terms of um, our PowerPoint notes there. Uh, where were we there? All right. So if you look at, 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 at what you literally have, uh, as far as this day is concerned, normally you would find, uh, like I was saying a couple of uh, seconds ago, you'd find 3.3 uh, uh, volts and uh, uh, five uh, volts. Uh, normally, this would be for your onboard um, electronics. And then you've got your 12 volts now for uh, more resource or more power intensive uh, components. So normally, uh, like I was mentioning earlier on, your traditional hard drives. Um, So normally here, I think you want to be specific with this, uh, your hard disk drive. And uh, maybe uh, you can also discuss optical drives. I think some fans as well dependent on, uh, some case fans dependent, but I think what uh, is relevant there is to look, to understand that those are normally uh, the voltages that you've got incorporated there. I think in certain instances, you might even find 5.5 uh, um, uh, uh, as well there, but generically speaking, you've got 3.35 uh, and, and, and uh, uh, 12 again as far. So anything that needs more. So you, remember your traditional hard drives, obviously we'll discuss this uh, when we're looking at, at, at hard drive or mass storage technologies in tomorrow's session. 
you've got uh, uh, read write heads or actuators or rather you want to be specific mechanical parts so these mechanical parts need more power in terms of basic functionality and same difference would go with your optical drives uh, 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 your your dvd roms uh, and so on uh, would obviously need a little bit more power when it comes to basic uh, uh, usage there. So it's important to understand uh, um, what's happening with, with, with connectors, which connectors are supposed to be incorporated as far as your setups they are concerned. So uh, by default, you can discuss uh, uh, the P1 connections, uh, the P, uh, which, which obviously, sorry, P1, which is um, uh, associated with your motherboard connector, 20 to 24 pin connections. You can also discuss Molex, uh, mini SATA connections and so on. It's important just to obviously be able to identify what they are, how they connect, and uh, obviously how much power is uh, literally associated with basic connectivity. So that's what we're going to be looking at in a moment there, just to look at uh, um, these connectors and how they function, uh, literally before then discussing what's happening with uh, um, your 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 uh, fire extinguisher configurations there as far as components are concerned. So if you go back to our images, all right. So we were just mentioning that that's a typical example of what uh, uh, your generic um, desktop. Uh, uh, PSU would be uh, or power supply unit. Uh, please take note of the of the typo associated with the with the with the label of uh, that particular image. It's supposed to be desktop PSU, not uh, desktop uh, UPS. Uh, because if you remember well, we, we we saw what a UPS actually looks like. So the 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 different types of connections that you've got now, like I was mentioning, your P1 connections. Uh, normally, this is your motherboard connector. That's the one that actually powers your board. So it can either be 20 or 24 pin. Normally, uh, in some instances, you might find that uh, depending on the type of board that you're using, some would actually need connect the, 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 the all 24 pins to, to, to power up. Uh, some would need just uh, uh, the 20 dependent. So you normally will have con con convertibles there that are so associated with uh, uh, connections. But what you find there on screen is a typical example of a motherboard uh, uh, power connector there, 20 or 24 pin. And uh, normally uh, you might find that some boards would need uh, an extra four, six or eight pin uh, uh, connector there just to supply more power, depending on, on the type of board that you're using. It goes back to what we were mentioning earlier on, to say, depending on the actual machine that you entry level computing uh, systems don't need as much power. A high end computing systems obviously would need more power. So it's important to take that into consideration when you are uh, uh, replacing or getting uh, um, uh, a PSU. And then uh, what you find on screen, that's a Molex uh, power connector. So this one. Uh, was literally associated with uh, um, dealing with the, the, the five folds we were mentioning earlier on and the 12 folds for normally your fans and, and much all the drives as far as uh, connectivity there is concerned. So one of the biggest problems there is that because of, of, of the shape and size of it, it was very easy for you to plug it in or for, try and force it in the incorrect way, uh, ultimately also ending up damaging certain components. So it's very important to make sure that when you do use Molex power connections, but again, uh, uh, you might not encounter boards now that have this type of connector because of its uh, um, uh, legacy type of, 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 of convention there. But again, like I was saying, these uh, um, connectors or the notches that you find, they are called chamfers that normally uh, aid with uh, guiding uh, um, uh, connection there, but very easy uh, to force the incorrect uh, way as far as connection there is concerned. So to alleviate that, normally you, you, you'd uh, discover that SATA connections were created uh, uh, much more uh, easier as far as, as connectivity is concerned. And at the same time, it 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 uh, it um it's difficult for you to force uh, an actual uh, or try and force connect an actual SATA connection, which you'll see in a moment, as far as basic connectivity there is concerned. So this was associated with uh, your five five rather and twelve volt uh, connections. 
And then you also find mini connectors as well, supplying uh, the same. So back in the day, most machines had a 3.5 uh, inch a floppy disk drive that will also need uh, uh, power as far as uh, uh, um, functionality is concerned. And that mini connector, also known as a Berg uh, connector, B-E-R-G, uh, was responsible for powering up these um, uh, distinctive devices. So obviously, uh, a SATA or a serial, because the, 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 what, 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 we, what we had a quick look at uh, previously, normally associated with parallel uh, uh, connected devices. So your SATA uh, devices would obviously need a 15-pin power connector that uh, uh, look at, at hot swappable features. Remember, when something is hot swappable, it means that you can change it out uh, as it's functioning or as it's as your machine is on without obviously you don't need to switch off the computer system to plug out and plug in uh, as far as uh, these particular devices or components are concerned. Again, uh, 3.3, uh, 5 and 12 uh, uh, devices associated with your SATA uh, conventions there. So normally an L shape associated with uh, uh, connectivity to avoid the whole issue of misaligning uh, uh, connectivity there. So a typical example, okay, so back to the Molex, a typical example, we actually wanted to look at, that's what a SATA connection looks like. So it looks, uh, you can actually see the L shape we were talking about earlier on, which um, tries to minimize the whole issue of you plugging it in incorrectly. So if you were to compare these, so if you look at this and that, it's very easy for you to swap around uh, because you just have circular connections that are there. So very easy for you to swap it around and plug it in the incorrect way. But if you go back to our um, to our SATA power connection on the other end, uh, you will discover that um, obviously, with because of that specific shape, it's uh, difficult for you to actually plug it in in the incorrect um, way. All right. So that's uh, uh, the whole concept that you've got as far as your specific setup there. Um, is concerned, all right? And then uh, what you also want to uh, discover is that you've got auxiliary connections as well, uh, uh, normally uh, to um, supply increased 3.35 uh, uh, volts uh, currents to the actual board itself. And um, this particular connection was based on uh, uh, the motherboard power connector from obviously the AT era. I remember when we looked at boards, we also looked at um, the AT or advanced technology board that uh, um, was uh, obviously there before uh, ATX was initially then uh, developed. So you've got splitters that uh, enable you to then uh, um, have more power connections associated or enable you to plug in power to more devices within your environment. So that's a typical example of, of uh, a, a typical uh, a splitter there within the Molex environment. And then on the other hand, you've got that P14 auxiliary connector I was talking about a couple of seconds ago that was there to supply more power uh, to your distinctive uh, um, to distinctive boards. So you've got uh, um, server motherboards as well that are that are that are more um, more that need more power naturally because of 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 of, of what is happening there. Uh, so you can discuss. Uh, 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 rails which um, enable you to, to to plug in more power literally when you're discussing what's happening as far as these uh, uh, distinctive uh, uh, component uh, mechanisms they are concerned and then uh, it's also important and imperative for you to discuss uh, uh, PCIe remember we talked about uh, peripheral component interconnect when we're discussing your, your your boards and the expansion bus, and as well as 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 uh, discussing what's happening with BIOS, uh, it's also important to, to understand that uh, there is power that that's necessary for you to plug into these uh, uh, environments. All right, so that's the um, 20 to 24 pin power connector uh, uh, I was talking about earlier on, um, and then PCIe, which uh, uh, again short for peripheral component interconnect express that's a six pin power connector that is relevant as far as uh, uh, connectivity there is concerned so with um, your basic atx you obviously have differences uh, uh, in certain instances uh, dependent on the actual form factor in terms of the shape and size associated with your uh, uh, particular setup 
Uh, a typical example of that would be what they call the SFX, which is also short for your small form factor uh, uh, platform say. So it's a typ different type of uh, um, PSU. That's one and the same thing. Only difference is shape and size because of the shape and size, obviously, of the actual uh, case that you've got. So that's a typical example of what an uh, SFX uh, PSU would look like. Again, like I mentioned before, a small power uh, 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 form factor there normally used with flex ATX systems. So if you go uh, back to your uh, uh, motherboard section there, as far as uh, um, uh, prescribed content there is concerned for your module, you've got your, 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 your flex ATX boards that you also can take into consideration. So to supply power to these, yeah, you've got different form factors in terms of the actual PSUs that are there as far as your uh, setups are concerned there. All right, so there's, there's um, other content as well. I think if you want to go back, let's quickly see if we can uh, reshare what's happening with um, our slides here. So if you go back here. All right, so you've got um, um, what is known as active PFC. So normally uh, you encounter that most of these, uh, some, some PSUs come with what is called active uh, PFC, all right? And uh, the PFC there is short for power factor correction. So this is power. Uh, factor perfect correction. So what 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 uh, normally happens is that uh, um, you'll discover that when 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 you're looking at at uh, supply of power. Remember, we, know, we, we mentioned that uh, your power company supply AC, but you obviously need DC. So there has to be some kind of conversion from AC to DC in order for your electrical components to utilize that power uh, accordingly. So um, you will discover that there's, there's normally a, 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 you could say a background noise or, or, or noise that is, or a humming sound that is normally associated with uh, electrical components most of the time. And uh, this humming sound uh, within uh, uh, the power industry is, is known as harmonics. So that humming sound is uh, known as uh, harmonics. And normally it's, it's um, you, you want to look at, it's the uncleanness of power supply really, because it's, it's, it's power that is not provided for in a smooth uh, uh, fashion, just for argument's sake. So normally you would discover that uh, um, over time, these, this, these humming sounds or the, this harmonics uh, uh, tends to, to, to damage uh, electrical com uh, uh, components or equipment and uh, um, normally cause a lot of problems with your basic uh, 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 power supply. So you'll find that most, um, um, that the, the best type of, 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 of PSUs would need to come with a specific type of architecture that tries to alleviate this harmonics, all right? And uh, how that particular uh, um, alleviation is, is, is undertaken is by a, 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 a setup that is known as um, active uh, PFC. So this tries to safeguard against um, harmonics, all right? Which is that humming sound or the, the imperfection rather of a power that is being supplied to your electrical components. So what active PFC actually does, it does, it, it has um, extra circuitry that kind of smooths out uh, the power that is coming from your, your socket uh, uh, before it goes to the, to the main, uh, um, uh, or from your wall to, 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 to the main power supply uh, uh, circuits as far as a uh, setup there is concerned. So th this smoothing process literally eliminates any harmonics. Uh, and obviously, like we said before, harmonics over time does tend to damage electrical components. So whenever you're looking for a PSU, I think it's imperative for you to actually look for something that has active PFC incorporated there, because that way you know that you can safeguard against uh, uh, um, um, 
uh, future damage as far as your basic uh, component mechanisms there is concerned. So active PFC is just um, extra circuitry that is responsible for smoothing out the power that is obviously coming from your uh, sockets there as far as your uh, specific environments there uh, is concerned. So ultimately important for you to ensure that uh, uh, you take distinctive cognizance of, um, of that fact. So with the cooling point of view, obviously you've got fans incorporated, like we said before, electrical component that obviously is generating a lot of uh, power that will obviously generate a lot of heat. If it's not uh, cooled appropriately, then you can ultimately get uh, uh, um, issues there as far as your uh, uh, configurations they are concerned. So it's important to ensure that um, you 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 uh, understand exactly the purposes of this fan, and to ensure that that fan is is uh, um, always clean, just to avoid any discrepancies that can take place as far as your uh, setup there is concerned. The other thing as well that you also want to understand is that ATX power supply units provide uh, um, a component uh, known as uh, uh, soft power. All right, so this is obviously ATX PSUs. So normally you find that uh, um, your ATX, uh, okay, let's go back to this instead. All right, so your ATX um, uh, PSUs uh, uh, normally come with what uh, an architecture called uh, soft power. So what, what this is all about is naturally the ability of you to uh, the ability of, of, of switching um, your computer system on and off uh, through your um, operating system so it's imperative to understand that uh, uh, your, your 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 basic PSUs uh, the, the, your, your your ATX ones would literally come with with uh, soft power environments there that obviously enable you to switch on switch off your computing mechanism through um your operating system or through your 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 uh softwares as far as convention so what that typically means that you don't literally have to uh, uh hit the power button as far as your specific uh, setup there is concerned so in essence um you you'll discover that atx power supplies literally never uh, uh turns off so power is always connected as long as it's connected to the power there power is always uh, supplied so it's always important when you're working with uh, uh, these PSU units to, 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 to ensure that whenever you're working on a machine, whenever you are typically trying to troubleshoot that uh, uh, computing mechanism, you ensure that uh, um, it's um, plugged off or completely uh, removed from power there as far as your uh, connections there are concerned. So it's important to understand the soft power convention, how it functions, uh, like we said before, uh, PSU, uh, it, it, it more or less gives the, 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 uh, uh, the responsibility of, 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 of uh, the turning off and turning on of your specific uh, uh, setup there uh, to your OS, all right? So in essence, your, 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 the, the BIOS or the operating system takes over uh, normally when, this, uh, when you switch on your, your computing system. And uh, that, what it takes over is the handling uh, the actual uh, responsibility of turning the PC on uh, or off. That's what your uh, software, soft power is all about. So you obviously can uh, and can enable or disable or look at, at uh, configuration within your BIOS environments there when you're dealing with your soft power settings as far as um, your computing mechanisms there uh, is concerned. So always important for you to take uh, consideration of as far as your setup there um, is concerned. I think the other thing is it, it's, it's important to understand that you can also, when you look at uh, connectivity there, without having to connect your power to, or without having to connect um, your uh, PSU to your uh, board directly there, you can short uh, on and off jumpers that are there on, on the board. Because normally you find that when you're working on an ATX system, you may find that uh, using the power button is inconvenient, right? So having to uh, plug, uh, hit the power button on and off every time that you're working on the system, especially when you've got the case open, uh, might not be as, as convenient as you'd want. So normally, um, it, it, that this is environments where you've, you, you haven't really plugged in the power button leads onto the actual motherboard. So um, 
one particular way that you can deal with 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 booting your machine or or, or supplying power or switching on the computer system is uh, um, short lit, lit, literally shorting um, soft on and off jumpers that are on your board. So you can use a key to do that uh, or a screwdriver dependent. And obviously a typical example of what I'm talking about there is, um, is this here. All right, so this is when you were trying to short your, your board so that you, you switch on your, your computing mechanism because you haven't connected the uh, power button leads uh, to the actual board it's, uh, itself. So that's one way you can do it. And you can also use your, um, your, your screwdriver to do that instead. And then um, ultimately you can also even discuss what's happening with uh, um, your fan uh, a sensor connections there because remember you've got a uh, direct connectivity of the case fans uh, to your actual board itself so that power is obviously coming through from your um, uh, PSU conventions there and uh, the other thing as well is that you can look at reducing noise so remember you had, uh, because you've got a fan uh, uh, that is or a fan that is then connected you want to find scenarios where you can literally reduce the, the fan noise. You can manually do this using uh, um, a specific device, uh, which we'll see in a moment. That's the fan that we were talking about earlier on. So it can gather dust. You can look at uh, removing it, cleaning it, and placing it back in should uh, noise uh, be experienced when you boot up your uh, computing system. And then you can use that uh, uh, distinctive gadget that you've got on screen now to manually adjust uh, uh, fan noise associated with your uh, computing uh, uh, mechanism there, right? And then you can also even use ATX uh, uh, power supply testers. We were talking about the multi-meter earlier on, the circuit test and so on. You can also literally use um, a, so with this, so this is uh, literally uh, connected to your uh, board to enable you to manually then adjust the fan uh, speed there. And then you can also have an example of what an ATX uh, power supply tester there is concerned, just to ensure that uh, it's functioning without uh, uh, distinctive uh, issues uh, um, there. All right. And then with the fires, uh, it's also important to understand what's happening with, with uh, uh, fire extinguishers and the different types of fires that are out there. Should a uh, uh, fire break out in the environment that you're in, it's important to understand uh, how to 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 uh, safeguard again yourselves or how to literally uh, pick up uh, uh, or use or utilize the right or correct uh, uh, fire extinguisher there. So normally it's important for you to understand the different types of fires that are out there. So typical examples now with uh, the fires. Um, so the typical fires, so what you've got uh, here would be you've got uh, class A. And as far as this particular uh, class is concerned, you've got uh, um, free burning uh, substances uh, or combustible substances like wood and paper. All right, so um, so this is free burning uh, uh, substances like uh, um, say wood uh, or paper. So free burning combustible substances there, like uh, uh, wood or paper. And then you've got class B, which now deals with flammable liquids, like uh, um, your solvents, uh, paint, or gasoline. And then you can also discuss um, class C, which now deals with, uh, this is electrical equipment, so live. Um, electrical equipment. And then um, you can also even discuss uh, another class there, class D, 
which um, your metals now. So this one is your combustible metals like titanium or magnesium. And then um, you also have another class the uh, class K. So this one now is dealing with your um, your uh, oils, uh, like cooking oils and fats. All right. So this is like your cooking oil. Oils, trans fats. All right, so typical examples. So these are the, the, the different types of fires that are out there. So it's important. Uh, but normally you might find that some fire extinguishers would obviously have a com would be a combination of uh, a certain classes there. So you might find that some fire extinguishers will be uh, classified as uh, A, B, uh, and C, which means that it can be used to try and, and, and quell fires that uh, are from each one of those uh, distinctive classes dependent on uh, um, uh, situations that are there. So it's important to understand uh, the different fires and uh, fire extinguisher platforms that are there. All right, so I think that, uh, that literally covers that uh, um, as far as your specific environment there um, is concerned. Um, I think from, from, from a research point of view, I'd like you to go and look at how to uh, successfully troubleshoot uh, PSU. So uh, from a research point of view, um, let's look at um, troubleshooting uh, PSUs, how to successfully uh, troubleshoot um, mm, troubleshooting PSUs, and then um, look at, at, at um, what it actually means to deal with rails, right? So troubleshooting PSUs there, and then I think you can also um, distinctively look at the whole concept of uh, installation as well as rails. So what to consider when you're looking at installation of PSUs and um, um, look at uh, the whole concept of rails. What, uh, how much power is necessary when you're looking at um, such components like your servers and so on. So I think here yeah, you get troubleshooting and then insulation of PSUs. And then I think you can also discuss the whole concept of rails as well. Um, uh, um, what's happening with the whole concept of rails, how do these, these function when we're discussing PSU. So I think um, let's uh, look at uh, maybe elaborate on um, rails. So this is obviously in, in accordance to PSUs, all right? Um, rails in accordance to PSUs. Okay, I think that's that um, as far as, as uh, that there is concerned. Um, do you have any questions, contributions uh, from the floor? Anyone with questions or contributions or concerns? Um, feel free to type out on chat there. Let me see if I can quickly unmute. Should we have anyone with anything pertinent to mention here? Give me a couple of seconds. In the meantime, anyone who's got something to say, I think you can type, uh, see what's got something on chat here. Give me two seconds. Right. Um, the test, uh, uh, Naidu, they, I think they'll give you a shout, eh? Um, I think that, that because of, of, of uh, the time that we started as far as the semester is concerned, uh, some modules uh, were applicable. I think this test, uh, this coming uh, week dependent, but I think for, for computer architecture, they might move that out, but I'm not uh, uh, certain on that one. We might need to still find out what's happening. 
as far as the campus day is concerned. All right. But again, like I mentioned right at the beginning, your actual um, content is chapters one to seven from the 10th edition. And then chapters two to eight on the, in the ninth edition of the prescribed uh, textbook there. So, uh, 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 I think we still need to first find out again. Um, I'll, let me let me let me uh, find out and then probably uh, pop you uh, send something via Blackboard uh, in terms of what's happening there because your your past still mentions TBC. So we just need to find out from campus in, in terms of. What, what's happening with actual changes of the base there. But I think that is going to be, especially for computer architecture, I'm assuming that's going to be pushed out uh, a couple of weeks or so. But I will confirm. All right. Um, any, anyone else with questions or concerns? Questions, concerns, or uh, contributions? Questions, concerns, contributions from the floor. Anyone? Questions, concerns, or contributions uh, from the floor? Questions, concerns, contributions? Uh, okay, so it seems like nothing is coming through. That's fine then. Um, so, like I mentioned before, should you still need to you go through content on in terms of the actual um, uh, upcoming assignment? Uh, again, like I said, there's already a clip on the YouTube channel. Please have a quick look at that one. And then, should you have questions, pop me a mail um, in a couple of uh, um, couple of hours. I should be uploading. Uh, this particular clip as well on the YouTube channel. So should you want to go through this content and if there's anything else that you still need to 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 uh, understand or need elucidated, uh, let me know and then we can take it from there. Otherwise, uh, thanks for attending. Uh, stay safe, keep smiling. We'll see you in tomorrow's session. Uh, we're discussing um, mass storage technologies. Cheers.